Our second story uh, for this episode of The Rolling Stone comes to us from Pink News, which is a pro-LGBTQIA2 plus news site based in the UK. And it has a very uh, interesting piece from this past week. Uh, we all know about Pete Buttigieg, right? Former uh, mayor of South Bend, Indiana, who is now, historical moment alert, the first openly gay candidate to run for president. Well, even if you're gay, you can run afoul of the LGBTQIA2 plus um, agenda, ideology, and ideologues, okay? According to Pink News, Pete Buttigieg's husband, Jason Buttigieg, was going to hold a campaign fundraising event for Buttigieg, Mayor Pete, um, at a gay bar in Rhode Island, the Dark Lady, okay? Now, 12 minutes before this event was scheduled to start, Jason Buttigieg and Buttigieg's entire campaign called it off and they moved it to another location. Again, 12 minutes before it was supposed to start. The reason being that the gay bar, the Dark Lady, refused to remove a prominent uh, dance pole that was there in the bar, okay? And, I mean, a dance pole, guys. Exactly what you think that it is, okay? It's not something that elderly couples waltz around, you know? It's not something that the hip young kids do, the jitterbug. Hell, you don't even disco around these things. We're talking about the dance pole that the strippers use, okay? And for this, for this, Pete Buttigieg and Jason Buttigieg, they were the villains, okay? They were the villains for moving the campaign event because the gay bar refused to uh, take down the dance pole. The bar owner, Buck Asprinio, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, said, quote, it's just wrong. Here in Rhode Island, we don't pretend to be someone we're not. I was undecided on which candidate to support before, but I think this answers the question. Furthermore, Anthony DeRose, okay, who is an employee of the club and has actually performed under his drag alter ego of Jacqueline Demira for 13 years, said that the incident has made him um, cool off toward Pete Buttigieg. Quote, I was so excited to get to meet Pete and Jason a month ago, but now I'm going to have to find another candidate. For someone who is very passionate about democratic politics, who is very excited for the very first openly gay democratic candidate for the presidency, it's disheartening that all of the sudden he doesn't want to be affiliated, unquote. And this news story from Pink News then um, shows a tweet from a Dr. Joshua Collins, who also lives out a gay lifestyle, who said that this was an example of internalized homophobia, straight washing, and puritanism. Okay? Good lord, puritanism is running amok in America again. Okay, where do we even start on this, gang? Seriously, where do we even start? First and foremost, let me just make a universal statement. You should not have presidential campaign events slash fundraisers or anything else connected to presidential campaigns, campaigns of any sort, in a bar that has strippers. Okay? At the very least, because the optics of it just look bad. I am pretty sure that this is one reason, this is the main reason why Pete Buttigieg and his campaign called off the event from taking place at the Dark Lady. Because the optics of it were just so bad. You know that if they had had the fundraiser and they had the cameras and people, you know, on Twitter and Instagram and this dance poll was 20 feet high and pretty prominent, you know that all of the other Democratic uh, presidential wannabes and especially Trump, you know that they would have pounded him for this because it just presents itself. The material writes itself with something like this. But even going above and beyond the optics of it, this is something that you do not want to mainstream. You don't want to make this normal because 
the unfortunate reality is that, you know, stripping is objectification. People are objectifying themselves for, you know, the sexual fantasies of people in the audience. And if we don't like objectification, and I certainly don't, then, you know, stripping, whether it's straight, whether it's gay, whether it's furry, you know, who cares? It's not something that you want to bring into the mainstream and make just another part of good old fashioned Americana, okay? It just doesn't work that way. So, for both of those reasons, this idea from the very get-go of holding a fundraising event in a gay bar that had strip poles was bad on its face, good for Buddha Gig for finally coming to his senses and realizing, you know, this probably won't look very good, okay? Because, again, not something that you want to normalize and bring into the mainstream. But what this story really shows, okay, is that the totality, it, it shows the totalitarianism of the gay ideology and the gay ideologues, okay? You will be forced to accept this, you know, these behaviors, okay? And these um, cultural choices, almost, I will say, as normal. Here's something, okay, that might anger some people. One of the reasons that was given for why gay marriage had to be created before 2015 and before Obergefell was because it was argued that this was actually going to stop the blatant promiscuity that is in um, the gay culture, okay? Everyone was very forthcoming that the gay subculture is very promiscuous. Okay, you ask people who have lived in the gay culture, you ask Joseph Schiambra, you ask uh, Robert Oscar Lopez, you ask Ronald G. Lee, you ask uh, Doug Mainwaring, just to list a few people um, off the top of my head. And then they said, oh yes, very promiscuous, okay? A lot of um, people in that lifestyle, in that culture, even if they are with a long-term partner, they will be not monogamous. They will be what Dan Savage, another gay um, sex advisor or sex expert or whatever he calls himself, what Dan Savage called monogamish, meaning, yeah, you know, this guy over here, you know, he, he's my partner or my husband, but you know what? We have this arrangement where I can get a boyfriend on the side sometimes, or I can go out and still date and he can do the same thing. We're monogamish, we're kind of monogamous, but we're not exclusively together. And what's fascinating about this is that this hasn't changed, and in fact, Rather than marriage changing the gay culture, the gay culture has started to change marriage. Give you an example of what I mean. Back in 2014, there was a fascinating piece written by a guy named J. Michelson for the Daily Beast. And J. Michelson, he's based in San Francisco and he also is part of the gay culture. He lives out a homosexual lifestyle. And the title of this piece, and I don't think that Michelson actually titled this piece its title. He didn't give this piece its title. Usually that's a editor or a publisher's job. But the editor or publisher at the Daily Piece, uh, Daily Beast, entitled this piece by Jay Michelson, Were Conservative Christians Right About Gay Marriage? Because Michelson says that, oh no, the promiscuity in the gay culture is very prominent and it is not changing. He said a conservative estimate says that 50% of the gay pairs in San Francisco as monogamish, not monogamous. And he said, and that's just, again, that's just a conservative estimate. Probably that number is much higher, like 75% or even more. So you've got only 25 or less 25% or less of gay pairs in San Francisco as actually monogamous, actually finding another guy and saying, okay, we're exclusively a couple. No more dating, no more one night stands, no more going to the strip bars, etc., etc., etc. And then Michelson said this. He said, when you know, straight couples who consider themselves to be allies of the gay community, when they found out about this, 
there were two reactions. One, and the less common a reaction, was a feeling of betrayal. Okay, they actually felt betrayed. They felt like they had been lied to. But the more prominent response was overjoyed giddiness because what these straight couples were thinking, what they had running through their minds was this. Hey, wait a minute. If you guys are married, remember, California created gay marriage before the Supreme Court did. If you guys are married or if you guys are exclusive, but you're only monogamish, if you can still date and have sex with other people on the side, why can't we do the same thing over here? In other words, open marriages for everyone. And that is not an exaggeration. Just in the past year that we left, 2019, I cannot count how many articles that I saw in the New York Times alone, which were praising open marriages as the way of the future, as being more normal than traditional monogamous marriages, that polyamory families were actually even better than traditional families, where if we heard that before, because they're just more parents, there are more people to take care of the kids. It's wonderful. So it was gay culture influencing marriage and families rather than the other way around. Now, so to get back to this story of Buddha gig and you know this whole fiasco here, what this really shows is that the mask is off, okay? Give them points for honesty at the very least. The mask is off. And promiscuity in the gay culture is not only being acknowledged, but now it is being made an integral part of the gay identity. So because there is no other way of interpreting what these people are saying. I mean, when you... When, when, for example, Anthony DeRose, the uh, drag queen performer at uh, The Dark Lady, the gay bar here, when he says that it's disheartening that all of a sudden Budigig doesn't want to be affiliated. Affiliated with what? With the gay culture. He doesn't want to be affiliated with the gay culture because he wanted us to take down this dance pole for male strippers, you know, for his presidential campaign fundraiser. When this Dr. Joshua Collins says that not wanting to be associated with a gay bar that prominently features a dance pole for male strippers is actually a sign of internal homophobia and straight washing? What other conclusion can we draw but that the ideologues in the gay community are saying no, promiscuity not only exists, promiscuity is a good thing. It is inherent to our identity as gay men, as men living out a homosexual lifestyle. This is integral to that identity, into that sense of identity. Therefore, if you are not a part of it, then pretty much bugger off, literally. And if you happen to be gay like Pete Buttigieg, then you become, there's no other way to say this, a gay Uncle Tom. You do, you become a traitor to not your race, but to your orientation, I guess. Because now the link has been made. If you are gay, you must be promiscuous. Or you can't have a problem with promiscuity. At the very, very least, you can't have a problem with it. So it shows that. And here is where it comes to affect the rest of us. Because if this promiscuity is integral to the gay identity, and everything about the gay identity must be normalized and brought into good old fashioned Americana, right? In the name of inclusion, tolerance, diversity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, love, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then that means that the promiscuity must also be fully accepted, right? The gay identity has to be accepted and promiscuity is an integral part of that identity there's no other conclusion to draw but that the promiscuity itself must be accepted, which means that it has to be normalized, which means that there's nothing wrong, right? With gay strippers. There's nothing wrong with this. In fact, how long do you want to bet 
Okay, we have drag queen story hour. When are we going to have male stripper story time in schools? Hmm? Because I mean, if this is just part of their identity, I mean, you're shunning them or saying, yeah, you know what, maybe not, not for kindergartners. Or you know what, yeah, yeah, first graders, they don't need to know about this sort of thing. They're supposed to be learning, you know, basic addition, right? In handwriting, if they still teach handwriting, they don't teach handwriting anymore. They're, 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 they're supposed to be learning, you know, the American Revolution started in 1775 and we fought the British, you know, and not the South or not Mexico or not, I don't know, Germany. As some people today seem to think that we did. You know, those are the things we should be learning about. If you say that, you are going to be the hateful, homophobic bigot. Because again, if this is part of the identity, then it must be accepted. And if it's accepted, then it must be normalized and made a part of society. So, if you don't want to be an enemy of society, like we talked about in the first story, if you don't want to be seen as a hateful white supremacist Nazi, you are going to fall in lockstep with normalizing this. So when they do have male strippers at your kindergarten, you will go along and smile and be like, isn't it so wonderful that we're so inclusive and tolerant? We laugh, but that is what's coming down the pike. This story kind of show gives us a glimpse into that future but anyway that is story number two